Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 481, Dementia, What Happens When You Lose Your Mind? Biobalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. All of us know people who, as they get older, start to worry about dropping a stitch. You know, I, I can't recall names. I can't recall words I'm looking for. I know I know the word, but I, I can't find it. Or somebody asked me, who starred in this movie? And I, I can't remember who it was or who wrote this book. And I don't know. And so then we all worry about, well, what if just getting old causes me to lose my acuity and my mm -hmm. intelligence? Because you get gaps in your brain. We associate that yes. with getting old. And in many ways, <clears throat> aging does cause that, suppose in most people, at age 90, but you shouldn't be doing this at age 50, 60, 70. And maybe even at 90, you can avoid it if you do the, do the recommendations that we give you about how not to lose your mind. Well, because really, I, I just want to stress that this means if you lose your mind, if you have dementia, your children have to take care of you. Or if you don't have children, then you're nieces and nephews have to use their the best part of their lives just to keep you alive or you use your life savings in a nursing home it is really critical that you don't lose your mind and this is this is why we want to talk about this today yeah i, I actually uh was in contact with a former student of mine this weekend who is a phd psychologist and teaches at university of washington and his mother has alzheimer's and mm -hmm. he, he's a cognitive psychologist so mm -hmm. he, studies deterioration mm -hmm. of the brain. And he said the saddest thing now that they're dealing with is that she doesn't remember that her husband died. Right. And so she's asking, where is he? Where is he? Right. Why, why is he not coming around? Mm -hmm. And he has to tell his brother, uh, he died 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so she's aware And then that she starts crying because she it's a new... It's it's a, a new it's a new loss loss and, and he does too. I mean, it's a new loss for both of them right. when they ha they have to open that wound again, mm -hmm. and it they rediscover it the next day when she doesn't remember. We had this conversation yesterday, and, and where's your father? And I mean, it, the the dismay and the pain and the sadness are palpable, and if it's, if we can find ways to avoid mm -hmm. it, we want to. My my mother in law was. Uh, lived with us for a long time during the time when her brain was kind of yeah. going. And I gave her hormones and did everything I could with supplements and, and the other things you can do. But I hadn't started doing that soon enough, basically. Yeah. So she still, if you don't catch that window where you can improve, you still can have dementia. Her brain on x-ray was or CT was shrinking. Yeah. And uh, hers was more from strokes than it was from Alzheimer's. But still, we had to then take care of her, and her life savings was gone right. by just taking care of her. And she was <laughs> she was efficient enough to die right when she lost, when it lost she ran out of money. But I mean, she Good she was ninety six. Yeah, well, I mean, we, but she spent six years like that. Right. We put an uh, addition on our house to take in Phyllis's grandmother mm -hmm. when she was in her nineties, mm -hmm. and what what and, and similar issues. Mm -hmm. But what was fascinating for me was how effectively she learned to fake it. Oh, yeah. And you ask them a question, you ask them something, and she, she developed a number of cute little phrases that she would My say. My mother-in-law did, too. I, and I think most people do. And then you don't know, it's, are they just being clever? Or mm -hmm. is that covering up the fact that they don't know the answer? Well, one of the things that, one of the little tricks is, you say, well, like my John said to, to my mother-in-law, what Christmas carol do you are, would you like to sing? And she goes... And she'd always say, I don't know. What would you like to say? Right. That's so then you don't know if they're being because polite, can't social. Recall. And, yeah. So he would say, well, how about this? Oh, I, that sounds wonderful. And then yes. they'd sing that that song. And so, I mean, because they used that it's a singing kind of family. So they, 
That's and, what well, they did. And there's evidence that, that smell and music are in different parts of your brain that retain those memories or retain access mm-hmm. to those memories longer than just cognitive data. That's true. So, and and it uh, just depends on where the damage is, though, because you could have a stroke and lose that part, but not lose your recall. And so, the stroke. So, so there are different types there are different of dementia. Types of there are dementia. categories. We 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 talk about uh, a group of diseases which can be caused by brain damage, uh, strokes, infections, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, mm-hmm. uh, post traumatic brain right. da- damage injuries. And all of those things can cause you to have what looks like dementia or Alzheimer's. It's not all Alzheimer's. Right. It's, it's, it, it can be any one of these things. And those things are all end up in the same place with somebody taking care of you and you not able to enjoy life while you're alive. Well, and I've read uh, that there are treatment facilities that actually create uh, generational age rooms. With, and they populate the room with furniture, like from the 1950s, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. with products like cereal or things that you would see ads they don't for, remember the new old stuff. TV shows yeah. that, that they run on the TVs. Mm-hmm. And what it does, and not that they remember something differently, but it calms their anxieties. They, they can go in they these rooms. They feel comfortable. They're not as angry. They're not as frustrated. They're not as upset. They're not scared. And they do remember because the older memories are the ones that seem to hold longer. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was five or six and we did this more than I remember yesterday. And what I ate yesterday. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Or who I talked to. So when you, when you have these people in an institutional environment Mm -hmm. because they can't function anymore, some of these rooms help them survive with, with less distress. My goal in my practice is to not have my patients have this issue. Now I can't be a hundred percent and I don't get every patient when they're 50 where we have a chance of preventing uh, the damage. Right. So the first thing we do in our practice to prevent this is to give back testosterone to both men and women. And what that is, it's, testosterone is an anabolic or growth hormone. And you think about that as a bad word, but it's not. We all have anabolism and catabolism at the same time to keep us even, like keep our brain the right size. Well, when we get old and lose our testosterone, then our brain shrinks because we don't make as much brain tissue as we lose every day. So it is a progressive shrinkage. Well, when we give people back testosterone, their brain stays the same size and repairs itself like it did when you were younger. So that's the first step in my practice is to give people back that hormone. And that usually gives them 10 years, if they do it early enough, it gives them 10 years beyond when they normally would get dementia or get Alzheimer's, they they get a lease on life for 10 years, longer than they, they would have before. Live more independently, independently more th- being adeptly. able to think, you know, drive, shopping, the whole bit, taking care of themselves. So there are contributors in addition to the hormones mm-hmm. that can impact whether or not you're going to develop these issues with right. dementia. Things that are, put you at risk. So uh, anabolic... Loss of, uh, of your testosterone is one of them. And, and you say anabolic hormones as opposed to anabolic steroids. Right. Because the anabolic stero- steroids are the ones that the weightlifter guys use to bulk up. That, that athletes term means like... Builds up. It builds up. They're talking about muscles. Down. Right. And they, they use adrenal steroids. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about estrogen, growth hormone, and testosterone. Okay. Those are sex hormones and a pituitary hormone. They're quite different, and they have they have different effects on dementia. So pure testosterone, pure estradiol, and and stimulation for growth hormone, all three of those hormones help you stay homeo, homeostatic, mm-hmm. basically balanced. balanced. Your right. brain doesn't shrink. Your body doesn't shrink. You don't get shorter, that right. kind of thing. So, so the first thing to do or the first thing that causes dementia would be the loss of the anabolic steroids. And that's at, for women, that's at menopause. And for men, it's a little later, maybe 55 to 60. Some men are even older, but they're lucky or they, they're blessed or they live right. So that's going to happen to all of us. Right. We're going to hit a point where Aging, our, our anabolic hope. hormones start to decline. And we need to replace and them. And we need to replace them. Then those of us who have that, and all of us will, mm-hmm. but who also then have obesity issues, mm-hmm. Or diabetes issues. That makes it, it, that makes it worse. increases it your risk it. of dementia. Okay. 
inactivity, people who just sit around, they don't exercise, they don't walk, they don't take their dogs out for a walk, they don't take themselves out for a walk, they don't get on a treadmill. That increases your risk of dementia and it de de decreases your thinking every day. Like when I work out, the rest of the day I think better. Mm -hmm. It's That is a proven fact. So, and now we have terrible diets. I mean, we've added that to the mix. Yeah, junk foods, fast foods, prepared foods, processed meats, uh, sugar added uh, yeah. foods that the, the government supports the corn farmers and soybean farmers by and we. Uh, and encouraging them to put all those things in, especially the sugars from corn, mm -hmm. in almost everything you eat or drink. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. hard to, to find. You have to really watch it. Packaged foods that don't have that in it. So you have to you have to cook, and and many people, especially in the their years where they have a family, don't cook because they're too busy carting their children around. Well, yeah, you're going to the soccer game after school or practice, and you got soccer, baseball, and music, and you don't have time to go home and fix supper, so you drive through McDonald's. I'm not sure that that's all that healthy either, because well, you've got your kids overscheduled. But I kids agree with need that. downtime too. But and you need time to talk to your kids while you're making dinner. I mean, that's a whole different conversation. Yes, but that's still. But absolutely, that's yes. still what's wrong with what or we do. Or you have crap at home that's that's quick because I'm hungry now. I need to eat mm -hmm. right now, so then I eat something that's prepackaged and made and has lots of added sugars, a, a candy bar or chips or whatever. That's not good for me. But we used to do. We used to cook on Sunday for the rest of the week. Basically, Plan make ahead. foods. Think about make it. Make foods that you could then. Do the last prep part of the prep that night. And try to put them in single meal containers. Right. So you just pull out Monday, pull out Tuesday. And right. And so and that's one way around it. But another thing that causes uh, dementia is stress. And stress gets worse. We have <laughs> over time, especially since computers are so fast and, and everything is so fast now that we're stressed by it. But we're, we're not naturally made to, to live with no downtime and no, and no time to think. Right. This is basically our world. Um, what about toxins? You talk about the toxins in the environment all the time mm -hmm. because of the plastics. Yeah. So much of it or, or yeah. other things as well. Well, there's, I mean, there's heavy metals in our environment. We've now, at least America, but not other countries, has, um, has stopped dumping heavy metals like arsenic into the water and the, and the ground, but that still has contaminated our, our world. And other countries have not stopped doing that. That's one contaminant that affects us and decreases our ability to keep our brain working. Basically, that affects our thinking and our brain, but also the toxins from plastics. And we haven't solved that problem yet. We still use plastics in everything. And then when we get rid of them, it takes hundreds of years for them to go away. Right. So recycling is one way that we can help that or using things that aren't plastic. But still, that is one of the big things that causes our brains to have dementia earlier. So we can't do much Let's about paint. that except talk to our congressmen and, and make sure that we have a, the EPA is actually working on that. I assume they are. Yeah. I don't know. They are, but the, the rules and regulations keep changing. I read an article in this morning's paper about uh, the federal government, a, a court ruling that reduced the ability of the federal government to regulate magnets in children's toys and more children are swallowing these little magnets. And when the magnets are in their system, the power of the magnets tears holes in the intestines. I didn't know that. Uh, it's in today's paper. Uh, but but they, they were saying, we can't just do it with all federal regulation. We need to do something. If you, you, if have, you have some. industrial regulation, mm -hmm. which is what we mm -hmm. have instead. And, mm -hmm. and they were saying that Neil Gorsuch was the judge that, that made this decision. That the industries can't be trusted to regulate it. And so the it's all about over sixteen hundred babies died last year because oh, they swallowed Lord. magnets. <laughs> so, you know, so, so you have to have federal regulation. But the but mm -hmm. the poisons, the toxins, the issues that are in the environment are of concern. And they're one of the reasons we have more dementia now than we had when our parents were alive and and kicking and and getting older. <laughs> but also, um, we have head trauma from auto accidents. Auto accidents are very common, and and hitting your head and on the side or in the front from an auto accident. Or kids in sports. The, oh, the yeah. Additive trauma over years of contact mm -hmm. that we don't may, maybe don't see until they're 50. Right. It shows up later. Yeah, it shows up later. And then that, and that usually shows up through not just traumatized pathways in the brain, but also it decreases hormones in athletes early. 
So like growth hormone and testosterone drop early. So we need to catch it when it drops. Right. So also on the list is statins? Right. There's now something called statin dementia. You need cholesterol. Your brain is made out of cholesterol. I don't know if you realize that, but that's what your brain's made out of. Uh -huh. You have to have cholesterol in your diet. I mean, that's just one of those things. I know you make cholesterol out of other foods for the vegans. I know you do that, but you don't make a lot. And cholesterol is very necessary for your brain. So brain, brain growth requires the building blocks, and one of those is cholesterol. And cholesterol is in meat, fats, eggs, cheese, milk products. I mean, those are all things that people consider not good for them, but they need to have that. But what happens with statins is even if you eat that stuff, it drops your cholesterol too low to repair your brain. So you have to watch. Statins aren't all the panacea that they say they are. They have a lot of risks. They can cause muscle damage, but they also can damage your brain. So be very careful about not getting your cholesterol too low. So you use the fat statin to focus on stabilizing your heart. But if you use too much of it... Or so your heart lives to 96, but your brain but only your brain lives is, to 86. Yeah. So that's, to me, your brain's more important. So we need to be having conversations about quality of life with our doctors as well as, as living extension longer. of life. Yeah. Okay. So if we live longer and we're lying in a bed in, in a semi-comatose state, that's not living. So all of these things that we've mentioned are things that are in the environment or lifestyle choices that we can try to impact. Right. The last thing is genetics. If right. I have the genetics, I can't change that. Well, you can't change genetics, but there's something called epigenetics. Okay. Very interestingly enough, if you have genetics for, say, um, <coughs> Alzheimer's. Like, I have one of the Alzheimer's genes and one that's normal. So APOE, if you have a 3 or a 4, that puts you at risk for Alzheimer's. And I have one 3 and one 4. So APOE gene, you can test for it, obviously. Um actually causes you to have a higher risk of Alzheimer's. But if your diet is good, you have basic Mediterranean diet with real food, and you take your supplements, and you exercise every other day, and you stimulate your brain with crossword puzzles or some kind of brain. They have lots of brain games now that you can have on right. your phone. Right. So when you're standing in line, you can do a brain game. So, the, so these are the things you can do to change your genetics, make them not appear. It doesn't really change the gene. It changes what the gene does, which I think is amazing. We used to think it was a descens. Right. And now we know that if you live well, you replace your hormones, you take the right supplements, you right. eat right, right, you stay away from some of these insecticides, other things that we have. Well, there's another thing I wanted to ask you about, because I noticed that you had on, in our notes about toxins. Avoid using garden sprays, yes. weed killers, cleaning products without a mask. Yeah. Uh, eat organic. Or gloves. Sorry. And or gloves. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, but then you say cleanse once a week with activated charcoal. Uh, what do you mean by that? So if you have, uh, if you've been exposed to a lot of this stuff that you feel like may be impacting your health, you can take activated charcoal orally once a week, and that will cleanse out some of the toxins in your body. The other way to cleanse out toxins you take it is, is a tablet or a yeah, liquid? Yeah, it's a or? tablet. A tablet. Okay. And it's on Amazon. It's not. There's not one brand that's better than another. Okay. But it's it's something to just cleanse cleanse your body. But you don't. I don't want you to take it every day because what it does, it also cleanses you of your vitamins and your minerals and and other things that are good for you. It is not a daily thing. It's once a week or once a month just to get the toxins out of your system. Okay. So then you put together a list, and we'll, we'll show it behind us. Uh, treat the diseases that increase the risk of dementia, mm -hmm. and then what to do to treat those. Let me mm -hmm. run through the list okay. quickly. We've mm -hmm. mentioned all of these, or almost all these things already. Treat diabetes, treat obesity, autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. inflammation from poor dentition, which go to your dentist. I saw a study every the other months. that said, that especially for older people, going to the dentist every six months can add five years to their life expectancy. That's true. And the way it does that is there's inflammation in your mouth. Your mouth has more inflammation than any other part of your body. And if you get your teeth cleaned, you have less inflammation. Okay. So that decreases your risk of atherosclerosis. Treat hypertension, treat vascular plaque. And how does, how does one do that? Well, vascular plaque can be treated by hormones because if you're a female, you take estrogen, that actually can get rid of some of that plaque. Okay. You, sometimes statins. 
sometimes CoQ10, some other supplements like um, fish oil, flaxseed oil. Uh, but vascular plaque can actually decrease and become more stable so that it doesn't uh, release any uh, emboli. So hormones and diet and supplements are basically the way we approach that. Also Neo40, which is, um, it increases nitric oxide. And so that's the same thing as at what we get out of Viagra, that kind of medication. But this is over the counter and you can take this and it will actually help lower the plaque, decrease okay. the plaque load. Uh, hemochromatosis. That's too many red blood cells and too much iron in your body. So you need to dump blood. And then thick blood from well, erythrocytosis. That's actually the one with too, sorry. Erythrocytosis is too many red blood cells. Hemochromatosis is too much iron. They're two separate things. Okay. And then liver disease and infections such as hepatitis. Treat All of these them. things need to be treated. Right. If, if you have them, if you're susceptible to them. And that will decrease your risk of dementia in the future. Okay. And what to do to treat those things, clean up your diet and throw away all the junk food and don't buy any more. Right. I mean, just go into your pantry and just... Lose weight. Junk food, throw it away. Go to the dentist. Take your prescribed medication. Now, doctors always say this and patients almost never do it. If they give you a prescription, take the prescription until the prescription is finished. Mm -hmm. Don't play with your own dosages. Right. Take the one that you're told to take. Uh, and it's a kind of a psychological, magical thinking mm -hmm. thing. People buy prescriptions, they take it until they sense that they feel better, and then they put it in the cabinet, medicine and, cabinet, and then it comes and back. It's like magical thinking. It, right. that, that'll be good. So they didn't complete the prescription. Mm -hmm. And so then, and, and some of those, they, some many people have in their medicine cabinet old prescriptions that are not finished that they don't even know what they're for anymore. Right. If you don't know what they're for, they need to be. They need to be flushed or thrown away. And you don't want to flush them. Well, they're they hormones. You don't want to flush them. In. Yeah. Uh, or you can turn them in at the pharmacy. I guess. Right. Go to the dentist. Take your prescribed medicines. Take supplements listed. Exercise daily. Blood dumps if you have hemochromatosis or erythrocytosis. Mm -hmm. I mean, you donate blood or you dump blood. Take anti-inflammatory meds to prevent inflammation damage. And then finally, and the most important one, replace your missing hormones. So all of these are things that you can do. Some of them require the cooperation of your doctor, uh, like, like if you need to have a blood draw and get rid of blood that has too many red blood cells. Uh, but there are things that you can do that are not intrusive or invasive or terribly expensive, and they can reduce the risk that you will have of having dementia problems as you age. In the future. In the you future. You have to do Down this ahead of time. Yeah. You can't wait till you get dementia and then think that this is going to fix it. It's not. So, you have to do this. You have to think ahead and start making yourself as healthy as possible so you don't get dementia. So think now or you won't think later. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.